Hey everyone, welcome back to DSP Lectures. We were discussing about the properties of discrete time systems for the past few videos and so far we learned about linearity, stability and invertibility. In this lecture, we will learn about the next property which is time invariance. We will study about the definition of time invariance, how to check if a system is time invariant and finally a solved example on the topic. So let's get started. A system is time invariant if and only if the input output characteristics of the system do not change with time shifting. That is, suppose y of n is the output of the system for an input x of n. Then, if we delay the input to the same system by some amount k, the output of the system should also be delayed by the same amount k. So, if the input x of n minus k provides y of n minus k as output, then the system is time invariant. Okay. Now, this time invariance property is also known by the name shift invariance. This is a more generalized term as we may not be always dealing with time domain. Okay. Next, we will see how to check if a system is time invariant or not. Step 1 is to provide a generic input x of n to the system under study. The corresponding output of the system will be y of n. Now, we will feed this output y of n to a delay system which will delay the input to it by some k units. Therefore, the output of the delay system is y of n minus k. So, that is the first step in determining whether a system is time invariant or not. In the next step, instead of delaying the output y of n, we will delay the same input x of n by some k units using the same delay system we used here. The output of the delay system here will be x of n minus k. Now we will feed this x of n minus k to our system under study. As the output of the system, we will get some output y dash n. So there are two possibilities for y dash n. One possibility is that y dash n is equal to y of n minus k. The other possibility is that y dash n is not equal to y of n minus k. In the first case, when y dash n is equal to y of n minus k, the system is time invariant. Time invariant. In the second case, when y dash n is not equal to y of n minus k, the system is time variant. Time variant. Okay, so to sum up the procedure, first we provide the input x of n to the system and the output we received is delayed by some k units to get y of n minus k. Next, instead of delaying the output, we will delay the same input first by some k units and the delayed input is then fed to the system. If the output y dash n obtained is equal to y of n minus k, then the system is time invariant. I hope this is clear to everyone. Let us now see three solved examples on this topic. Each of the three examples are important as each example discusses a property of time invariant system. So please pay close attention. The first system is y of n equal to x of 2n. To check for time invariance, we will follow the procedure we learned just now. In the first step, we will provide a generic input x of n as input to the system. The output will be y of n equal to x of 2n. Now we will feed this y of n to a delay system which will delay y of n by k units. To find the delayed output, we need to replace n here with n minus k. Similarly, here also replace n with n minus k. So, output is 
y of n minus k which is x of 2 times n minus k which is equal to x of 2n minus 2k. Coming to step 2, we will first provide x of n to the same delay system which we used here. The output here will be x of n minus k. Now x of n minus k is fed to the system which we are analyzing. So what will be the output here? Let us analyze that. If we see our system, when we provide an input x of n to the system, the system behavior is to provide x of 2n as output. That is to replace n with 2n within x of n. Therefore, we will do the same here also. In the output, we will replace this n with 2n. So, output y dash n is equal to x of 2n minus k. Now, there are chances of mistake here. Students will accidentally write the output as x of 2n minus 2k. But this is wrong. Why? Because the system is only scaling the value of n by a factor of 2. Any constant present is not affected by this scaling. Okay. So, please be careful when you derive the system output. Now, if you check y dash n is not equal to y of n minus k. Since y dash n is not equal to y of n minus k, the system is not time invariant. So, this is a time variant system. An important property to learn from this example is that for a system to be time invariant, it should not be time scaling. Now, let us see the next example which is y of n equal to 2n plus x of n. Following the same procedure, providing x of n as input to the system, the corresponding output will be y of n equal to 2n plus x of n. Now, for delaying y of n by k units, we have to replace n with n minus k in this expression of y of n. So, the output of the delayed system is y of n minus k equal to 2 times n minus k plus x of n minus k. Now, in the step 2, we will first delay x of n by k units to get x of n minus k. This is then fed to the system as an input. If we analyze our system, when we provide x of n as input to the system, the system will provide 2n plus x of n as output. So, when input is x of n minus k, the output will be y dash n equal to 2n plus x of n minus k. That is, wherever x of n was present, we will replace it with x of n minus k. Here also, as you can see, y dash n is not equal to y of n minus k obtained in the step 1. So, this is also a time variant system. Time variant. This example teaches us the second property of time invariant systems. For a system to be time invariant, the added or subtracted term should be a constant or zero. For instance, in this example, instead of 2n, if we just had 2, which is a constant, then the system would have been time invariant. I suggest everyone to pause the video here and try this yourself. That is, check the invariance of the system y of n equal to 2 plus x of n. Okay, moving on to the third example, we have the system y of n equal to n into x of n. Proceeding just like before, we will provide x of n as input to the system. The output will be 
y of n equal to n into x of n. This is then fed to the delay system which will replace all n in y of n with n minus k. So output here is y of n minus k equal to n minus k into x of n minus k. Coming to step 2, let us feed the input x of n to the same delay system used in step 1. The output will be x of n minus k. Let us feed x of n minus k to the system in example. As you can see here, the function of the system is to multiply the input present to it by n. So the output here is y dash n equal to n into x of n minus k as the input here is x of n minus k. If you see again y dash n is not equal to y of n minus k. Therefore this is also a time variant system. The property we learned from this example is that the coefficient of the terms in the system equation should be constant. For instance, if the coefficient of x of n here was some constant like 5 instead of n, then the system would be time invariant. So everyone please pause the video here and try to see if the system y of n equal to 5 into x of n is time variant or time invariant. Also comment your answers in the comment section. Ok so to sum up this lecture, we learned the definition of time invariant systems, the procedure to check for time invariance and finally we learned the three properties of a time invariant system through solved examples. Now I would like to give you some homework questions. I suggest everyone to check the time invariance of these systems using the three properties we learned. Remember that for a system to be time invariant, it should satisfy all these three conditions. If it satisfies just two conditions but fails the other, then the system is not time invariant. Okay. You can also check the time invariance using the procedure we learned in the video. Once you get the answers to these questions, comment them so that it will help others also to do the homework. That's all for this lecture. In the next video, we will learn about the next property of discrete time systems which is causality. If you have any doubts, feel free to ask them in the comments. Either me or some other viewer will surely help you out. If you found this lecture useful, please like the video and support us by subscribing to the channel. Thank you for watching properly and have a great day.